this last line of, of our gospel, very easy one to remember if you do have to learn a gospel passage off, it's John 10.10. 10. I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. So when the Lord comes, he doesn't come to give us more laws. Important and all as the commandments are, important and all as the law is. Uh, the Lord himself says, uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but one, not one dot, not one iota will be taken from the law until its purpose is fulfilled. So the law is important. At the same time, though, as we've said before, our faith cannot be reduced to a number of laws. It's much more than that. It's, it's a lived relationship. It's life to the full. Now, interestingly, uh, in the contemporary mindset, life to the full, right? Life to the full. Complete happiness is what? Complete happiness is no rules and do whatever you want. Happiness is, is like the, kind of the, the Saturday night mentality of do whatever you want and get away with it. It's no rules. Okay, it's, it's uh, fulfilling whatever desires I have. That's happiness. That's freedom, isn't it? Isn't it? Is it? No, very good. Uh, so so that's, that's the general idea. If I could do whatever I want, then I'd be happy. That's freedom. That's happiness. What's sad is, is the, 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 the reality behind that. The reality behind that, that mentality is, is emptiness and is actually selfishness. If I live my life doing what I want, when I want, how I want, that actually will not lead me to happiness because you find that no matter how much you live or experience or have, it's never really enough. In the first Pirates of the Caribbean, I should probably be quoting the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, but um, first Pirates of the Caribbean, there's a, an interesting scene, right, where, what's the bad guy, Jack, no, hold on, the other guy, uh, Captain, no, the other guy, the bad guy, Barboza, there we go, where Barboza is talking to uh, Elizabeth, isn't it, is that her name, talking to, to and, and he speaks about the consequences of stealing this Aztec gold, right, so they steal this Aztec gold, and the Aztec gold was cursed, and the more they spent, the more they bought, the more they consumed, uh, the less satisfaction it gave them. You know, and he said, the more we drank, the thirstier we became, the more we ate, it turned to ash in our mouths, and the more pleasurable company we had, we discovered that nothing could satisfy our lust. The more, and it's, it's like a perfect analogy for sin, the more of it you get, the less it satisfies. And so they became cursed to being, on one hand, wealthy, and on the other hand, having nothing at all, not even a body in the end. It was just, everything just turned to, to ash inside them. They couldn't taste anything. They, it, the whole world, no matter how much they could, they were, they, were, they were invincible in one hand and completely unsatisfied in the other. And that's, that's just like sin. It's just like sin. The, the more we live this kind of uh, freedom where we, th uh, as we think freedom is, just do whatever you want, the more empty life becomes. So freedom isn't the, the right to do whatever I want. Freedom is the ability to do whatever I should, whatever I ought. So I should be able to, to get an education, to, to work and provide for my family, to, to travel and to, to freedom of speech, you know, to also vocalize my opinion against maybe uh, a government or a, an, an oppressor. I should, be, I should be able to defend myself, all of these kind of things. These are all these freedoms are good, but the freedom to simply do whatever I want, whenever I want, that's, that's not freedom, that's selfishness. It's kind of very easy to lead to laziness and a whole host of other sins. But freedom isn't just the right to do whatever I want, but it's rather the ability to do whatever I ought. And in that kind of, it's like within the, the, the rules of play of any game, that's where then you can experience the, the joy of playing the game well. There's always one guy, especially in maybe lower tier, lower tiers of a game, who thinks that the rules apply to everyone but him. You know, he's the, the guy who shoulders you in the face uh, when, when, you're, when you're carrying the ball. I like, that's, that's, hang on, that's not the way you play the game. Please send him off. You know, because there's no skill. You know, there's all, the, the guy who has no skill, he just goes straight through everyone. You know what I mean? Boom. Um, because he doesn't know how to round someone. Uh, so that kind of thing. It's, and it's, it's actually, it actually makes the game kind of miserable. 
for everyone probably except him. And maybe he's enjoying himself. Hopefully not. But either way, within the confines of, I would say, the, the way the game should be played, then you actually experience the, the skill of it and the, 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 the challenge of it and the joy of it and the lack of injuries uh, through it. So the rules of a game don't impede the game. They make the game. Following what the Lord asks us to do doesn't impede our freedom. It makes us free. It makes us free. So then rather than living a life that fundamentally does not satisfy us, we can discover the truth of our psalm. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. Nothing else, no matter what quantity of anything else we have, Nothing else will satisfy. And that's actually the way we're made. Because if something else would satisfy us, then we wouldn't really need heaven. We'd be happy enough where we are. But we're created for God. So nothing else is going to satisfy. So he, he trusts us then with this limited time of freedom here on earth to see will we choose him above all things. We can do other things, we can have families and we should enjoy ourselves and we should enjoy a good meal and a good sunset and good company and all that kind of thing. Absolutely. But ultimately, do we choose him for our first place, as, in our, as our first priority? Do we or don't we? That's what, that's what we're here to do. Do I choose God? Do I want him? And if so, then we will experience how, how this psalm will really come to life, you know? It's a psalm we've heard so often. As like the deer that yearns for running streams. So my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? Beautiful, beautiful Sam. We're created for this. Oh, send forth your light and your truth. Let these be my guide. Your light and your truth. All the commandments are truth. His word is truth. Let these be my guide and let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell, a.k.a. heaven. <laughs> All right. Let these bring me to heaven where I see your face and where you satisfy my thirst for all eternity. So we thank the good Lord for the infinite generosity that he shows us each and every day. And we ask that we too will discover the Lord as the fulfillment of our every desire. And I will come to the altar of God, the God of my joy. My Redeemer, I will thank you on the harp, O God, my God. Amen.